Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, as you can perhaps tell from the change in background, I am back filming in the motherland of Scotland once again. So uh, yeah, it was time to get out my old favourite, the Six Degrees North Goblet, which I filmed with for years, and sit in front of Thumper the Drum Kit, which I always enjoy. So um, yeah, it's going to be nice to film a few more Scottish beers for you here on the channel. There's some really interesting stuff that has come out over the last few months. I was here last time in February, I want to say, of 2020, just before the whole COVID-19 shit hit the fan. So, um, yeah, there's been a few really interesting things come out over the last little while that I'm very, very curious to try. So hopefully you guys enjoy this latest round of Scottish beers. Uh, we will see about getting some Irish stuff in as well. My guy Paul, who gives me lots of Irish beer to review, um, was hoping to get some stuff to me, but we need to figure that out around the whole kind of COVID-19 lockdown and things that we're going to have from Boxing Day. So fingers crossed we can get that to work. And I will also see about getting a couple of English things on the channel as well. But I do want to focus on the Scottish and the Irish stuff over the next little while because there's, as I say, some really interesting stuff here in Scotland. And of course, it's always nice to put some Irish stuff on the channel as well. So we'll be sticking to the Celtic nations mostly, I think, over the next kind of three weeks or so while I'm home. But um, yeah, as I always like to do with um, my first videos when I come back to Scotland, we're going to kick off with something local to me here in Clipmanninshire in central Scotland. So for this review we are going to go about two miles along the road from my house to Alloa and we're having a look at another beer from Williams Brothers Brewery who are one of the older and more established craft breweries here in Scotland. And this is my first beer from a series that they've dubbed the Totemic Tall Boys and these are meant to be a little bit kind of more crafty and bold than what you'd normally find from these guys. I'd always consider Williams Brothers a sort of session beer brewery if you like. That's how I would always refer to them. But this particular beer is called the Juice Tiger. They're describing this one as a double dry hopped IPA and it comes in at 7% ABV. So um, yeah, very very curious to see how this one turns out. This is one of two and potentially more of the tall boys that you're going to see reviewed here on the channel over the next few weeks. I think there's five or so have been released so far. But um, yeah, really curious to see how this one turns out and hopefully it's another good beer. Big shout out to the guys at Valhalla's Goat over in uh, Glasgow. I would always recommend people coming to Scotland go and check out that beer shop. It's actually owned by Williams Brothers and uh, that was where uh, this beer was bought from actually. So do make sure you check them out once this whole COVID-19 shit has uh, well and truly buggered off. But uh, yeah, big thank you to them for organising the box that they did for me and uh, this was the one that they recommended a try. So yeah, there we go. But uh, yeah, very curious to see how this one turns out. Always nice to review some new beers from Williams Brothers Brewing of course, one of the older breweries like I said and hopefully you guys enjoy my take on this one. So let's see how we get on. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Williams Brothers Brewing before and you will no doubt see some more added to that list in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're in interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the uh, Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I can. I do wish that I could get Scottish beers more regularly over in Sweden where I normally live. But uh, yeah, always great to add to that. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Williams Brothers Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So as I've told you in a number of previous videos, I think this must be review number 12 or so that I've done from Williams Brothers over the years, but anyway, um, this company started out as the family owned Glen Brew home brewing shop through in Glasgow. The first ale that they produced was inspired by a 17th century Gaelic recipe for Freyach Heather Ale, which is named after the Celtic mythological hero. 
And um, in 1988, basically what happened was that a woman of Gaelic descent came into the brew shop with a translation from Gaelic into English of this ancient recipe, and she wanted to create a batch of this beer to share with her family. So she agreed to share the recipe with Bruce Williams in exchange for helping to brew this first batch. And I think, from what I gather, there is basically an agreement that this woman and her family can kind of have as much beer, <laughs> have as much of this beer as they want because of how well it's gone for Williams Brothers over the years. But uh, don't quote me on that. But um, the small, uh, they produce just a small batch of this beer, uh, about five barrels big, in the Tainoat railway station near Oban, uh, over in the west in Scotland. And uh, the following year, having um, you know, having you know, word of mouth, having done what it does in Scotland, um, this beer proved to be very popular, and the demand had increased dramatically. Um, so in 1989, Scott Williams joined his brother Bruce, and at this point they, be they began to develop other historic recipes, such as the Grotsit, which is a gooseberry wheat ale, the Kelpie, which is the seaweed ale, Abelum, which is an elderberry black ale, apparently introduced into Scotland by Welsh Druids, which is pretty cool, and they also introduced the Alba Scots Pine Ale as well, actually. Um, but the official start date of the Williams Brothers Brewing company is listed as 1992 and those four recipes that I mentioned a minute ago were originally brewed at the Maclay Brewery in Alloa but then they were brewed at the Craig Mill Brewery in Strathaven which was actually built by Williams Brothers originally I didn't realize that uh, but they were produced there between 1998 and 2004 but again the demand for the beers proved to be very big so in 2004 they relocated to their current base at the fourth brewery in Kelly Bank which from what I understand is an old uh, Maclay facility I think that is um, the old, uh, you know, the, the old McClay brewery that used to be very big actually. Um, but you'll find this brewery in Kellybank in Alloa, and this was when they adopted the name Williams Brothers Brewing officially, from what I understand. Uh, but oddly enough, these guys are the last brewery in the old brewing capital of Scotland, and over the years they've built the capacity of this brewery up to be 100,000 hectolitres, and they do have plans to build a new brewery facility near their current site that will have a capacity of 200,000 hectolitres. So um, yeah, that's going to be pretty impressive actually. Um, but these days the brewery is run by Chris Williams who is Bruce's son and Scott Williams is still involved as well actually. So um, yeah they've produced a good number of different beers. I think they've produced somewhere in the region of maybe 50 different beers so far, 40 or 50 I think it is, but um, yeah they are getting a little bit more adventurous these days. I would always have considered Williams Brothers Brewing as a kind of session beer brewery. My favourite beers from these guys would probably be the Caesar Augustus. Um, the Seven Giraffes was always quite a nice one as well, I always enjoyed that and a lot of people like the uh, the Joker IPA, but probably my beer of choice from these guys would be the Caesar Augustus. Paradigm Shift was a nice one if you wanted something a little bit more kind of uh, caramelly and malty as well, but I've had some really good stuff from these guys over the years and uh, yeah for me Caesar Augustus is a little bit of uh, a Scottish classic actually but um, yeah definitely one of the more established Scottish breweries they really made their name with these uh, these historic recipes that they did the Freya Heather Ale of course is a very very famous beer so I might get one or two of those for a live stream or something like that and uh, drink them with some of the English guys we'll need to see about that but um, yeah Definitely um, a really nice brewery actually and one that uh, that uh, I do want to have on the channel at some point for a Meet the Brewery segment. I was talking to Chris Williams about that but obviously it's a bit difficult with the whole Covid-19 situation at the moment. Maybe we can sort that in February again when I'm home for my, uh, my dad's 70th birthday um, but again you know you can't really guarantee that at the moment with this whole COVID-19 situation so maybe it will have to be later in, uh, in 2020 because I do plan on being home again in September for a little while so maybe we can do it then we'll figure that out but I do want to get a few Scottish breweries involved in the meet the brewery thing and Williams Brothers being so local to me will be one that I'm looking at and Harveston Brewery in Alva will be another one but um, yeah always nice to review new beers from these guys cool to see that they're getting involved in the more kind of American style craft beers I guess we could say now um, so yeah fingers crossed these tall boys turn out to be really quite nice. I've heard good things though. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Williams Brothers Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can of course check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually film uh, film the tasting part of this video. So yeah, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up Although I think you've seen it in quite close detail already, but yeah, I have to compliment them on this This one is really quite cool quite striking actually It does remind me a little bit of the Space Tiger beer that Amundsen Bruggery did uh, Was that about two three years ago now? But yeah, that was my immediate thought when I saw 
I can on this one was that it reminded me of the um, the Space Tiger that Amundsen did. I bought that uh, beer down in Durham, if I remember rightly. There you can see the Williams Brothers Celtic symbol on this one. That always used to be on the bottle caps for the um, for the Williams Brothers beers. They used to have like a kind of tartan background on the bottle cap, but these days I think it is just the black one with the sort of white outline. But it says on the back here, Juice Tiger, with a roar we pour this double dry hop IPA uh, and immerse our senses in the huge hop aroma. An aggressive bitter bite is balanced by the magic of malt and smoothed out with orange undertones. Untamed and uncompromising, this tall boy delivers fierce flavour. So yeah, 7% ABV this one. I actually don't know what I paid for this. I actually I actually have no idea what I paid for this one. I think I paid, I paid like £73 or something like that for all of the beers that I did on the unboxing the other day, so I'm not actually sure what I paid for this beer. I would guess it might be about £3.50 or £4 or something like that, but, you know, always good, always good. But just to tell you the stats of this beer, which I have here before we taste it, 7% IPA, this one is hot with Magnum, El Dorado, Idaho 7, Citra, Mosaic and Equinox, so quite an impressive array of hops in there. Magnum, we know, is quite a powerful bitter, bittering hop. El Dorado gives you lots of passion fruit and soft kind of fruits in there. Idaho 7 is a very soft tropical fruit hop in my experience. Citra, we know, is lots of mangoes and little complexities. Mosaic is a kind of tangerine orange, and then Equinox is a lovely lime. The malt base in this one is uh, pear malt, Munich malt, Vienna malts and a bit of crystal so that should be a really nice kind of big bready note and it's also got a little bit of orange peel and blood orange puree added into it as well. So yeah, black top on this one which is quite nice, 440 milliliter can so let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste in there. I'm really curious about this beer. So um, I haven't, I'm not sure exactly where the best places to get these beers would be in terms of supermarkets and things, but I have heard that um, Sainsbury's are normally quite good for stocking the different Williams Brothers beers these days. The nearest Sainsbury's to me, of course, is over in Stirling, so it's not somewhere I would go too often, although I would, if there is the chance to get Williams Brothers beer there, um, I would definitely go across and do that. Um, I'm thinking there's hardly anything left in the can, we'll just put the rest of it in. There we go. That'll do. Normally I don't pour the whole thing in straight away, but, you know, I went a little bit wild there, so why not? 440 millilitres in the glass there. So, um, yeah, this looks pretty damn nice. As you can see, I love this. I do love this 6 degrees north glass. This is the first, I think this was the first proper beer glass that I bought, actually. I bought this on, like, the second day that 6 degrees north was open come to think of it. I really, and I've just stuck with the tulips ever since. I really like them. But yeah, um, as you can see with this beer, I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on the camera right enough, um, but yeah, you can see this beer has a lovely, um, it's got a lovely kind of rich, just ambery colour to it. I'd describe this one as a nice kind of blood orange. I'm not sure, as I say, the lights are here behind my drum stool. Great for filming on the things on this, by the way. But yeah, this one is... Um, a lovely kind of blood orange colour, this one, I would definitely say that. You can see when the beer poured it had about a finger and a bit of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. Um, there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. And I did have a wee bit of a sticky thing there where I obviously missed a wee bit when I was uh, kind of rinsing the glass out. But it certainly looks very, very nice, this one. There is a wee bit of a natural haze to this beer, but it certainly looks like more of a kind of West Coasty type IPA rather than a New England hazy or whatever, but the other one, the other tall boy I've got should give you a more kind of New England haze to it, but it does have a wee bit of a Nordic connection, we'll say that. Um, but yeah, certainly looks the part, this one. Um, nothing really surprising about this beer when you consider what style it is, a 7% IPA, so let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one then. Ooh, <laughs> that does smell pretty damn nice, I have to say. You know, for me it's quite interesting because it really... There's just something that's kind of classic Williams Brothers about this, but at the same time, it just smells a bit more <laughs> adventurous. I mean, I do have a feeling that if um, someone put this beer in front of me when I was, uh, you know, blindfolded or whatever, I do have a feeling that I could tell you that that's a Williams Brothers beer. There's just something about the way that these guys do their malt bases that is so distinctive. And uh, whenever I have a beer from these guys, it's just always the thing. I love the, the smell of the malt bases that these guys do. I think it's maybe just the fact that they use a blender like German and, uh, you know, they use a bit of German, English and I think a bit of American malt in their, their beers as well, actually. They use malt from all over the place, from what I understand. Um, so, yeah, there's just something that's very distinctive about the malt bases in Williams Brothers. Um, 
And you know, it, it just reminds me of some of the, the other beers that I've had from these guys. It reminds me a little bit of Paradigm. Uh, is it Paradigm Shift? No, sorry, Pavlov's Dog is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, Paradigm Shift, if I remember rightly, was the kind of uh, the, the, the red IPA, the slightly stronger red IPA. It was Pavlov's Dog is the one it's a little bit more kind of malty and things. That's what this beer really reminds me of, a little bit, to be honest. But it smells great, this one. It smells like a proper old school, um, kind of West Coasty type IPA, to be honest with you. A little bit like, you know, Sculpin or something from Ballast Point. It really has a bit of that sort of vibe about it, like Amarillo, old Amarillo hops. Um, so yeah, it's a bit surprising that Amarillo's not in this one. So yeah. I have to say, I like that about this beer, but I suppose the orange and stuff that's in the base there really makes up for that. Um, but yeah, the malt base in this one then, you do get a lovely kind of soft white bready character out of this one. It's a little bit bread crusty almost, which is great. You've got a wee bit of a sweet kind of caramelly note to this one. Um, definitely a little bit of a straight up caramel for me, but also a little bit of a more biscuity, uh, McVitie's digestive sort of thing. But they all come across as being quite soft. It's almost got just a big bread crusty quality to it, which I really like. Um, so... Yeah, the aroma that comes out of this one, I think, is um, is really very nice on the malty side of things. But there's just something about the slight graininess that this beer has that um, just tells you, you know, this is a Williams Brothers beer. And I like it when breweries have that sort of kind of trademark to them, if you like. I always think that's um, quite a nice thing. I always enjoy that. So, yeah, always good. Thumbs up to Williams Brothers for that. Um... But yeah, we've covered. I think we don't need to say so much more about the malty side of this beer. We've covered that fairly in depth, I would say. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of a brown wholemealy bread thing in there, and then a wee bit of the white bread on top. Then all those kind of brown sugary notes that I was talking about. But um, yeah, on the hoppy and fruity side of things, then um, there's not too big a green component to this beer. For me, the green side of this beer leans more towards the grassiness rather than anything else. You do get a wee bit of floral character in there. Um, all of the hops in this beer, of course, are capable of giving you that floral character. You know, the ones that we're mentioning in there, the Idaho 7, the Citra, the Mosaic. Um, Oh, the other one's going out my head. What was it again? The Idaho, the the El Dorado, um, all and the Equinox as well. All of these are like twelve percent plus alpha acid. The Magnum, of course, is the one that you would focus on as the bittering hop. But all of those other hops that are in there are um, capable of giving you that big um, kind of floral aromaticity. But you don't really get a lot of that out of this beer. This one definitely leans more towards the grassy side of things. You get a wee touch of earthiness out of it because of the the mosaic. But um, yeah. It's um, it's got a lovely just it's just got a lovely grassiness to it. This one with a wee touch of earthiness for me. Um, maybe the fact that it's not got such a big green component might be due to the fact that there's the the orange fruits in there because that always affects the flavour a little bit as well. The fruits always if you add fruit into the beer, it always takes away a wee bit of the the green component in the uh, in the actual flavour. So maybe it's doing the same in the aroma. I've never noticed that um, to such a degree before, but. I would surmise that that's kind of what's going on here. But uh, remember that the aromas and stuff that you're going to get out of the hops will always be affected by when they're, added in the, uh, when they're added in the brew. Because if you add these hops earlier on in the brew, or in the boil rather, um, you will get more of a bitter component out of them. And all of these hops can have a big spicy character to them. But if you add them later and later in the boil, you're going to get that trade-off between bitterness and spiciness in favour of flavour and aroma. And that's probably what's going on here. I would, I would guess that the majority of the hops that are in this one have been added within the kind of last half hour of the boil. An IPA like this will normally have a boil time of about 90 minutes or so. Um, but you can go less than, you can have a little bit less than that. But I would guess that it's probably about 90 minutes. That also affects the colour of your beer as well. It's, well, the colour of the beer is down to one, the malts, the types of malts that you use, and two, the length of the boil. The longer you boil the beer, um, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker quality out of it but that also takes its base from the types of malts that are in there like I said but um, yeah the aromas out of this are lovely it's, it really leans towards that big oily orangey sort of thing it's almost like smelling a beer that's kind of an Amarillo single hop if you like um, the tropical notes I think do take a little bit of a back seat you can get a wee bit of the kind of limey note from the Equinox and of course the, the, the mosaic that's in this one is going to give you a lot of a kind of quite bright tangerine. The actual orange pulp and things that's in here, the blood orange pulp um, and pure, or puree I should say, and the orange peel, they're giving you a big almost amarillo like oiliness to be honest. But I think the tropical fruits do take a bit of a back seat. You can pick out like a wee bit of mango and a wee bit of a, like a soft papaya 
type quality to this beer, but I don't get the kind of stronger passion fruit and things that you might get from the Idaho 7. Um, or what's the other, I keep forgetting that, the Idaho 7 or the uh, the uh, the Eldorado that's in here. But um, yeah, the, quality, the aroma that comes out of this beer is very, very nice. But you guys watching the channel well know I'm a sucker for orangey leaning IPAs. So yeah, I think I'm going to enjoy this one. I'll say that straight away before we've tasted it. But as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of this one before we get stuck into it. Um, lovely big oily orangey leaning IPA for me and it's got a bit of that classic Williams Brothers malt base to it. So yeah, I'm very curious about this. So yeah, let's taste this. This one is the Juice Tiger, an IPA coming in at 7% ABV from Williams Brothers Brewing Company, one of my local breweries here in Clip Manager, based in Alloa. Let's get stuck in. Slanja School, cheers. Yeah. That's really nice. That is very nice. Um, what I'd say about this beer, um, you know, this is a, it's, to me, this is like a really solid kind of gateway beer, if you like. Um, as I said to you, you know, Williams Brothers, for me, has always been a brewery that's really focused on kind of session beers, if you like. This is the sort of, you know, it, it's almost like, in a way, it's almost like the brewery are taking kind of baby steps in a way. You know, this is a good beer to give someone who is a more traditional drinker to introduce them to the more adventurous American um, side of brewing, if you like, um, and this one is a it is in a lot of ways it is like a very kind of old school West Coast IPA. It reminds me of the likes of Sculpin, you know, um, to an extent the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Um, you know, it reminds me of these kind of things, and I really like that. Um, you guys will know if you've watched the channel that I love West Coast IPAs. So it's quite cool that one of my local breweries is is producing something regularly like this. Actually, I think it's very very. Uh, cool this one, but at this point in time I would say that this is almost like a kind of gateway beer into the American um, craft beers. At 7%, you know, um, it is even a bit, it's quite a bit heavier actually, you know, a lot of these New England hazies, at least in Sweden, the steep beers, the OOs and things like that, are 6.5, so this one is a little bit heavier than those actually, but um, thumbs up to Williams Brothers, I really like this one. Um, and to me it has a little bit of that nostalgia factor. If you're if you're missing a good kind of West Coast IPA, this one's definitely going to put you on the right path, that's for sure. But yeah, solid stuff from me. Um, and again, it's got that multi kind of trademark that you would expect of, uh, of Williams Brothers. So yeah, this is a really nice just drinkable, drinkable beer actually. It's almost, to me, in some ways, it's almost like the, it, it has that same kind of vibe to it as like the Jarl from uh, from Fine Ales over in, um, over in Argyle. Like that's a really kind of classic, bigger, hoppy, drinkable beer these days. This one obviously is a bit more alcoholic than that. Jarl's like five point something percent, if I remember rightly. But this beer is a little bit like that in a sense. It's got that big kind of hoppy bite. Um, so yeah, this one still has it still has a bit of that Williams kind of sessionability to it, which I really like. It's still got that trademark sessionability, but it is just a bit bigger. It just has a little bit more of a kick to it. So yeah, I like I like as I say, I really like what they've done with this one. They've still kept their trademark, but they have just kind of boldened it up a wee bit. So it does you know it does exactly what they see on the website. Um, so yeah, uh, this beer has my approval, but I think you guessed that already. Mm. So yeah, let's break down the flavour of this one then. Um, straight away with this beer, you get that nice kind of um, sort of mix of a white bready, wholemeal bready sort of thing, just blanket in the middle of your palate. That takes over the middle third of your tongue and it goes a little bit further towards the, the back third of your palate. I would say that the back third of your palate is distinctly more grainy. I would definitely say that about it. Um, and as you go further into the aftertaste, that graininess gives you a little bit more bitterness out of the beer, but the middle third of your palate does definitely sweeten up a wee bit. If you go right into the centre of your tongue, you do have a touch of sweet caramel, and as you move gradually further away from the centre of your palate, you'll get a bit more of a kind of, um, you will get a wee bit of, I would say, a sort of McVitie's digestive biscuity component to this one. If I was blind tasting this without the... Um, 
without knowing what malts were in this, I would actually guess that it had a wee touch of Pilsner malt in it because it does have a wee bit of crispness on that border region between middle third and back third of your palate. I would have guessed from a blind test that it had a wee bit of that in there, but that could be the Munich malt that's giving you that, to be honest. I mean, Munich malt is fairly popular. There's quite a few breweries, pardon me, putting that in the New England IPAs these days, and I've noticed that component in, in quite a few things, but um, yeah, as I say, that's one of the, it's the malt bases that are the trademark of Williams Brothers uh, Brewing for me. I mean, when I've been reviewing all their other beers before, I think they've updated their website fairly recently to tell you what all the hops are, because I don't remember uh, knowing what a lot of the different hops were in these Williams Brothers beers before, uh, but it, this one, as I say, it does not feel a million miles away from what they've done before, it just feels like it's got a bit more of a kick to it. So, um, yeah, probably the Williams Brothers have been over the years quite adventurous with the hops they're using, so that's never a bad thing, but um, yeah, the malty side of this beer is quite nicely done. It's got a bit of crispness to it, it's got a wee bit of that kind of trademarky graininess that you expect from Women's Brothers, a bit of the smoother bready note and a wee sweet component. Quite a classic um, West Coasty type IPA this one, but just with a wee bit of a, a kind of almost English, dare I say, sort of graininess to it. So yeah, that is quite nice. Um, so yeah, onto the hoppy side of things then. I really don't think there's too much more we need to say about the, um, the malty side of this beer, but when you consider that there's Vienna and uh, Munich malts in this one. You might expect it to just be a wee touch smoother than it is, but that's just how it goes. But yeah, on the um, hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you do have a wee touch of earthiness there, which will be both from the magnum and from the, the mosaic. As you move further forward along the sides of your palate it gets a little touch herbal, and then as you reach the front corners of your palate it's a little bit more kind of, uh, it does have a wee bit more of a kind of floral and aromatic component to it, but around the front curve of the palate where you do uh, expect something a little bit lighter and grassy, you get a nice kind of oily um, component out of this one, and that'll be the puree and the orange peel in this one that are doing that. As I always said, when you add fruity, uh, when you add fruits into beer as adjuncts, it takes away a bit of the kind of bitterness from the green component of the beer, but it suits it, it really does suit it. But yeah, you do just get a wee bit of that zestiness from the, the oranges, both the blood orange and the orange peel on that front part of your palate. And that lingers there into the aftertaste, actually. It's almost zesty to the point where it's just a wee touch bitter, to be honest. So um, yeah, I like that about this. But yeah, as I always say, that front third of your palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. If you go towards the back of that front, Third year palate, there's definitely a wee touch of that more pungent, grapefruity, passion fruity sort of thing. And that'll be the El Dorado and to an extent the Idaho 7 that are going to give you that. And the Citra is capable of that too, in fairness. So all three of those hops are giving you a wee bit of a grapefruity note there. But as you move further forward from that, it fades away a wee bit. There's a wee touch as it moves to a more kind of passion fruity note, but I think that grapefruit actually does linger there quite a wee bit. And then as you reach the the front half of that front third of your palate, there's definitely more, you get the tangerine oranges from the mosaic coming out and you get a bit of the kind of, uh, towards the very front of that you start to get a wee bit of the lime in there as well. So um, yeah, the thing that surprises me about this one is that when you've got Citra, Idaho 7 and um, you know, uh, El Dorado in this one, although you it wouldn't be so apparent with El Dorado, Idaho 7 and Citra have, you know, really interesting complexities to them. El Dorado's a little bit more straight up. Um, but yeah, you don't really get you know the pineapples and the papayas and things like that that you would normally expect out of those hops. And um, maybe I could say that those hops are actually better to use in beers that have a slightly smaller um, hop profile, if you like, because um, then they shine a little bit more, to be honest with you. But um, it certainly doesn't take away from the overall vibe of the beer. It would be interesting to try this one without the orange as well and see if those components of the... Um, the El Dorado, the Idaho 7 and the Citra come out a wee bit more, but uh, at the same time, I really like that big orangey zest that the beer has. Um, so, yeah, this this beer, I think, overall is is very, very nice. It's got just, it's it's like a classic Williams Brothers beer with just a bit more of a kick to it. I think that's a good way to kind of summarise, to summarise this one. Um, yeah. But, yeah certainly gets 
a big um, a big thumbs up from me this one. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. As you know though, I very rarely drink the same beer uh, more than once. Um, apart, you know, Caesar Augustus would be one of the exceptions to that. But um, if I did see this on tap somewhere. This would, you know, I, I would definitely consider trying this on the tap as well, actually. I do think, I would wish that Williams Brothers would open up their own bar in, you know, Alloa or Stirling or something like that. That would be a really cool thing. They do have the In Deep underneath the, um, the Valhalla's Goat Shop in Glasgow right enough, so that kind of is their tap room of sorts, but it would be nice to see a, a properly Williams Brothers branded bar, actually. So, um, yeah, they own various other venues throughout the city, I think, in Glasgow, but I couldn't tell you what they are. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one. If I saw it on tap, I would try a pint of this for sure and see how it goes uh, It goes there as well. So this beer gets a thumbs up from me. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, um, I think we've covered the flavour pretty well. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, uh, I would say that this beer is kind of right in the middle of the spectrum, mid-bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. Um, it does have a wee touch of crispness to it, but mainly smooth. There's a little bit of an oily component to this beer, but I think overall very slightly oily, but still a very sessionable beer, this one actually. Again, it's it's very typical of what you would expect from Williams Brothers if you've tried uh, the other beers that I've mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, um, on the bitterness side of things, what would we say about this? This is definitely, this one isn't going to blow the head off you in terms of IBUs. I think this one's maybe about 40 or 50 IBUs. So it is a little bit conservative in that sense. It's probably about the same as the Joker or Double Joker in terms of its bitterness, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's probably it probably is about that that kind of level to be to be honest. Um, so yeah, but forty or fifty IBUs I think is what you're getting out of this one. Malbec, like I said, it has a little bit of graininess to it. It gets a bit drier as you go into the aftertaste. Nice sweet component to it, and a nice smooth breadiness as well. And the fruits, like I say, the the big oily orangey qualities are nice, um, and you do get just a little bit of that kind of darker, more pungent. Uh, tropical note out of this beer too. But overall, this one's quite a nostalgic beer for me. It does remind me of the likes of School Pin, you know, the Sierra Nevada Paleo, like an, uh, like an orange version, I guess, of the Paleo, I guess you could say. But um, yeah, it does um, have a really nice, um, it just has a really nice vibe to it, this one. A big orangey, kind of classic West Coast type IPA, this. So thumbs up to Williams Brothers for doing something a wee bit different. And I hope that I can review the other ones. Um, in the Tall Boy series. I need to get a hold of the Choco Blocka actually and they've got a lager in there as well that could be very interesting to try. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Juice Tiger, a really quite old school West Coast um, type IPA, this one with a good bit of orangey component to it. So yeah, right up my street and I think this was a nice way to kick off the next round of the, uh, the Scottish beer reviews. So you'll definitely be seeing more from Williams Brothers on the channel over the next few weeks and I would like to see their beers back in Sweden actually, that would be quite nice. Um, maybe I should set up a Scottish import company into Sweden to supply Seastemble Lager, that would be quite nice actually. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This was the Juice Tiger, 7% American IPA with a bit of orange peel and uh, blood orange in it from Williams Brothers Brewing Company, one of the older and more established craft breweries here in Scotland, mainly known for their session ales and their historic recipes, but um, yeah, this was a really nice taste of something a wee bit different. So have a go at some of these totemic tall boys as they're calling them, and I'm sure you're in for a bit of a treat with the other recipes as well, but this one is certainly very nice. If you like an old school West Coast type IPA, this is going to be right up your street, especially if you like oranges like me. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Williams Brothers Brewing Company. We will return to these guys uh, within a couple of videos because I do have one more of their beers. And fingers crossed we can get a few more of those tall boys in over the next little while. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out Williams Brothers Brewing Company. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Slange it, Scott. Cheers, the Juice Tiger 7% IPA from Williams Brothers Brewing Company in Alloa, Clickmanager, here in Scotland. Cheers.